Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Context is King. I'm Rebecca Brayton, and with me as always is WatchMojo founder and CEO Ashkan Karbustrushan to discuss expectations versus gratitude. All right, so what are we talking about here? I had a lot of time <laughs> during the holiday break as we ushered in not just a new year, but a new decade, and I came across this Depending new... on who you ask. <laughs> Yeah, no, the way we're, for all intents and purposes, it's a new decade, people. We're not talking about Jesus Christ and all that. Come on. Uh, so I came across this article on, uh, on Medium, uh, Expectation versus Gratitude by Henry Latham. Uh, all right, so it's interesting. He's basically talking about this concept of, you know, the gap between, you know, your mental state of mind, your state of mind and your mental happiness is actually whether you perceive things in a positive light or negative light. So, for example... You could be thinking it could be warmer. It's a beautiful warm day. The meal could be better. Appreciate having food on the table. That drink a little colder. Appreciate the fact that you can buy a cold drink. <laughs> My job should be better. Appreciate your job. I should be paid more, Rebecca. Your colleagues. Okay, that's like all. Yeah, that's okay. Your call. Okay, I got it. <laughs> My team should be playing better. God knows I feel <laughs> that. Uh oh, wait, what? Uh, that even if you're the wait. Oh, it's typo. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I am. You're back, always. I am, I am spell checking on the go. Uh, even if your team may not be playing well, they are trying. Okay, there you go. Violin music. <laughs> okay, now as much as it's, you could think. Okay, first of all, when you hear that, do you, are you like, hey, good thinking, or are you like, I want to vomit? That's. Like... No, no, I, I, I think like that. You do? Yeah. Okay. Believe it or not, and I guess not. <laughs> no, you do. I, I mean, I've known you for 15 years. I would say, yeah. In the I didn't last... always. No, you didn't always, and nobody does. I still don't. I'm super grateful. You know, like a good example is, so in our 10th year, I finally brought on a CFO, not comparing myself to Steve Jobs, but Steve Jobs bringing a product guy kind of hard. Being a finance guy, bringing on a CFO was kind of hard for me. Whenever there's something that he does or says that I may not like, I'm still like, I'm happy he's around, you know? Even if I'm like, I would do it differently. I'm like, it doesn't matter, he's here. Same thing with the team. But this guy is spot on, because I realized in the last three years, when I've gone through various bouts of, super happy, like the battery symbolically being fully charged to, oh my God, I'm drained. You know, and there are times when the, the game calls for a, more of an offensive playbook, sometimes more defensive. So I've gone through bouts where I've been super happy, super like, let's go take over the world to like, what the hell is going on? I'm on the battlefield, I'm being shelled, this is crazy, I'm in the trenches. And like I said, the bullshit of we're crushing it, it's not always the case. But I realized so much of my last few years of frustration and disappointment has been about me. It's a state of mind. It's that I wanted everything that we do to be a win. And I wanted everything to be as crushing, so to speak, as our core business. And I kind of realized that, you know what? That's not possible when you invest in a gazillion projects, like a, an investor that invests in startups. Not all of them are going to be necessarily uh, successful. And you know what? As much as I do see the good in everybody, and this is a bit harsh to say, I realize not everybody's going to be a star. You know, like I got kids now 11 and 9, I go to the PTA meetings and I'm sitting there and I feel like, you know, they're like, your kids are great, they're good students, they can improve this or that. But I go, I hear the teacher always talking about the average grade. And I'm like, it's true, there are some kids that are struggling and while there are bad teachers, some kids are just, they're not necessarily going to be uh, learning as quickly as others, they're going to be laggards. And, I feel like you have to be okay with that. You really have to understand that, both as an employer, you know, executive manager, or like an employee. Um, and I came back, you know, really recharged, different mindset, and I realized that a lot of it is with my expectations and um, not necessarily being reasonable, wanting everything to be a win, everything to be a goal, everything to be a, a you know success. And life's not like that. And I mean, so I'm, I'm, yeah, but I do see that in you. I just think I've struggled with that more than anything else. Yeah, I mean, I. I guess it's one of those things where you have to take everything as a learning experience. Yeah, I mean, it's true that I'll, one of my favorite lines that a smarter, wiser guy once told me, I said, hey, do you have any regrets doing something? He was like, I'm glad I did it once, but I wouldn't do it again. You know, and That's it's so true. That's what I so said true. after bungee jumping. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Yeah, I would not. I love the fact that then The Rock, you might want to show some B-roll, by the way, here. I love the fact that The Rock and Kevin Hart asked you that, and then they're like, yeah, I would never do that. <laughs> I've not done it. I was like, what the hell? Technically, I'm not even sure that The Rock can I assume he like sure, weighs he might, too much? I think like, he I, might break the whole apparatus. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I think ultimately, um, having worked as a youth when I was in college in customer service, I used to get 
uh, you know, calls from people who were calling in to complain. You know, like you go on Yelp, and Yelp is different. You may be like, great restaurant, because, you know, you want to be seen as like a critic, whatever. whatever. Forget Yelp. But my point is, when I worked in customer service, nobody called to be like, I love you guys. You guys did a great job, right? It was just to complain. And I had well, Yeah, this, but that's because they want something. The, who wants something? The people calling. Exactly. No, they, they're unhappy, right? So they're unhappy. They want to complain. They want to get some kind of resolution. But my point is that there are all these other clients who may be super happy, who are not bitter, who are not disappointed, who are not going around blaming others and blaming the classmate, like, oh, this is the teacher's pet, or oh, this the person. silent majority. You know, exactly. And yeah. I, what I realized is I just said, you know what? I don't want to say the hell to them because I actually still fundamentally don't want to change the core person that I am. And I see good and even like when the whiner complains about something, I'm like, okay, what's the extract of, you know, what's like the nugget of wisdom or useful thing that I could extract even if the rest is just petty and, and BS. But I'm so okay with that. Like obviously it'll always be a challenge and a struggle, but like at the age of 41, average life expectancy being 82 in Canada, I was like, yeah, it's about time that I kind of am okay with that. Like, people are going to complain. People are not going to be happy. Uh, projects are not going to pan out. Not everybody's a superstar. You know, it's like, hmm, I'm worried if I should say this. Um, there's this. We can edit it out. No, I'll say it, but uh, I want to see how I could massage it so it's not obvious. Like, there was this guy who is more experienced than I am, and he was talking to me about when uh, they basically uh, took over the operations of a company that wasn't doing well. And I won't say specifically the reference he made, but it was kind of like, let's say, like, nobody's won a Nobel Prize here, and nobody here is going to win a Nobel Prize, so check your ego at the door. Which was really, really harsh, but it was actually like, I go, wow, I wish I had, like, the comfort to say that, because I'm always like, like, it was actually what people needed to hear to kind of, like, get rowing in the right place, but it comes across really harsh, and it comes across, like, demoralizing, but it's kind of trying to set the agenda that, like, look, guys, it's not like you've won all these Nobel Prizes, so you're walking around with this big ego. But I am the idiot that goes out and hires totally un um, unexperienced people thinking they could win the championship. So when some of them don't win the championship, I was like, why are you disappointed in them? Like, they don't have the experience. Or if you could go hire somebody who's worked like navigating a Boeing 737 and you're like, I want you to fly the Cessna and I want you to be super happy. It's not going to... So I just got to the point that I kind of felt like I was, uh, I was like emancipated. I was like born again. I was like, so much of my frustrations have to do with this false reality expectation that I have that everybody's a superstar, everybody's driven, everybody is super competent, everybody is super eager. And it goes back to my point, which is... You know, some people are good at creating value. Some people are good at just adding value. Some people are good at closing or finishing. And some people are just there to do their job, and you should be fine with that. And it's harsh, but, you know, if I If I think... knew chess, I would say it in chess pieces, but I don't. Oh. Chess sure. is a great sport. Is it a sport? Game. It's a game. I don't so know. That's a game. I doubt it's a anyway. sport. So I know it's a bit harsh, and we live in an era where I feel, especially with LinkedIn being where it is now, which is like this weird, you know, Facebook 2.0 where everybody is, which is fine. Um, I feel like there's a little bit too much bullshit in the ecosystem and not enough real tough love practical advice and people need to hear it. So hopefully, you know, while this may seem a bit, you know, not varnished feedback, I think it's uh, it's accurate and true. And personally, I'm not talking about others, just I know that I am like, I have like this born again mindset and it's because I just kind of like started to view things a bit more realistically. All right. Well, let us know what you think in the comments, if the glass is half full or half empty. See you next time.